Howdy folks, Gomer here. This is the first official Port Charles vlog that I'm going to be doing. Uh, this is going to be going for a while because uh, Port Charles was a uh, spin-off soap opera for General Hospital, which started in 1997 and until about 2003. Uh, these, as far as I know, they're going to be going up weekly, and they're going to cover a week's worth of episodes. So, so that's like, what, 52 weeks in a year? Da -da 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 -da. Yeah, we, 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 we're going to be going on for a while. <laughs> Uh, potentially, unless I need to fill in with other things, then I might do it to two weeks or whatever. Um, the uh, show itself, uh, after the pilot episode, it was like 30-minute episodes. Um, and as I said, it's a spinoff of General Hospital, so of course you have characters from the original show coming in and, and help establishing that a little bit further. Crossovers with the main show, including the Nurses Ball, which is fucking awesome. <laughs> um, some other noteworthy things. Uh, that It does go a completely different route in uh, later years, but we'll, we'll cover that when we get there, if you don't already know it. Um, what I have been very, very, very lucky to find, and actually helped spurn the start of the series, is that you can find a lot of episodes of Port Charles, maybe even all of them, on YouTube. So, it's really great. Um, ah, excuse me. Uh, so, so, with that said, <laughs> let's, let's dive right into the pilot episode. It's a feature-length pilot. Uh, even without commercials, it's like an hour and a half, so it's it's pretty pretty decent, pretty good start, and it it it's set it's there to basically set the stage, introduce all these new characters, and reestablish some older ones. Um, like for example, and I'm, I'm just by in full disclosure, I do have my notes here. I'll probably have them with me. I might, you know, you know every now and then I'll try not to put them in my face next time, <laughs> but um. But, you know, just so you guys know, I do have my notes, um, and uh, you'll probably see me do that every now and then. Just, you know, just so you guys know, it's it's there. Uh, because, hey, you know, this is, this is you know, soap opera. <laughs> so, um, but but I like to think I have a good good memory for it. So, we'll see how, well, take a, basically take a shot every time I have to refer to my notes <laughs> at this point. So, we start off... Uh, I'm gonna st I'm gonna start off with like the uh, established characters that are being brought in because you know they're the ones that are linking the two shows together. Uh, the shortest one, the, sh the one with the shortest arc so far is uh, Scott, and he he's been a character since uh, almost the very beginning of the show. Um, I know he was like a kid back in the '60s and then came back as a teenager in the '70s. And has been played by Ken Schreiner ever since, and he was like one of the one of the uh, part. One of the uh, characters around the whole Luke and Laura plot lines back then, um, still even to this day on on the main show, he still has he just is not a big fan of Luke for obvious reasons. You know, like well, Luke um, seducing and raping, not necessarily in that order, uh, hit the love of his life away. <laughs> uh, so yeah, uh -huh -huh. and by the way, Luke's a hero. Just just throwing that out there. But that's a different blog altogether. Um, but anyways, fast forward to now, Scott, he had married a woman named Dominique Taub, I think her last name is. And for one reason or another, she couldn't get pregnant. So they did the in vitro thing, and, and they had Lucy Co. be a surrogate, because Lucy's good friends with both Scott and Dominique at the time. And she gave birth to his daughter, Serena. And after a while, he just went off to Canada for whatever reason. And at this particular point, as the show opens, he's not able, you know, he doesn't want Lucy to be around her, be around uh, Serena because of Lucy's boyfriend, Dr. Kevin Collins, or as I call him, Doc. Um, because as, as he's being pulled in, he is just fresh off of, uh, well, he was stalking and kidnapping. <laughs> uh, he had kidnapped and, kidnapped and stalked uh, Felicia Jones, who is... I don't know if she was the wife of the current commissioner or if they were just good friends at the time. I don't remember their their relationship at that point. But yeah, and, and that ended up costing him his uh, medical practice because uh, Doc's a psychiatrist. And we see him opening up to his analyst, Gail Baldwin, who is, yes, Scott Baldwin's mother, in interestingly enough. <laughs> mm. And how Lucy Coe plays into all of this. Well, she just got the results of the test back. She is definitely pregnant. <laughs> oh. So that's all of our old ones. That's how they start out, establish them a little bit. 
Uh, we do have our newer characters. Uh, well, I say quote unquote newer characters because the show is over. You know, this particular episode is over what uh, seventeen years old, I think. So I think a, a little over eighteen. Hey, you know what? It can legally vote. This episode could vote, and I hope it votes for Bernie Sanders. <laughs> No, 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 no. It, I, I hope it votes however it wants to. But, but okay, so we have our newer characters. And first off, the first new character that we're introduced to in the show, you might recognize him nowadays. Um, he's been a voice actor in pretty much everything. It's fucking Nolan North as Dr. Chris Ramsey, which if the databases on the internet are, are, are any indication, this was his first, you know, big role, you know. And when I say big, I mean, like, professional not counting like you know community theater or, or what whatever else um, this was his first credited role as dr. Chris Ramsey and he actually stays on for the entire for the entire run um, or at least he's contracted during the entire run I, I don't know how often they used him towards the end but you know he, he's been there you know and he'll be there um, opens with him you know he's waking up in bed next to a beautiful woman and, and he's apparently loaded <laughs> and not in the alcoholic way um, so, we established that a little bit. Uh, we also have uh, Joe and Frank Scanlon, the Scanlon brothers. You know, a couple of guys that have always lived in Port Charles, similar to the Spencers. Um, Frank is the older brother. He's a paramedic. And his younger brother, Joe, is one of the seven interns that have been selected for the, new in for the intern program at General Hospital. Which, I forgot to mention, Chris is another one of those. Um, other interns are... Other interns include uh, Dr. Julie Devlin, who is clearly uncomfortable with her father sending her a driver. Um, uh, Dr. Matt Harmon, who is who is a a uh, who is uh, how God he's in a wheelchair. Uh, I think he's been like paralyzed from the waist down or, or or somewhere down, and 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 that's both true of the character and of the actor. So they're not doing like wheelchair face or anything. You know, he actually is paralyzed and he actually you know that so they can get a better thing um let's see another one is uh dr jake marshak who as we first see him he's having girl troubles <laughs> aren't we all uh, speaking of girl troubles uh we have dr eve lambert who comes off as kind of a spoiled rich bitch to to put it that way um i know some people won't, won't like that choice of words but it kind of fits and probably call it that in universe a couple of times. Um, and the last intern we run into is Dr. Karen Wexler, who actually is a, a, a character from the original show. Uh, she's actually Scott's older daughter with Rhonda Wexler. And yeah, they go into some of Karen's backstory. And it turns out that she also knew Joe and Frank growing up, which, hey, not, not too bad. <laughs> um... And so the the, the you know the doctors uh, Joe, Chris, uh, Eve, Julie, Jake, Matt, and Karen they they've all they're, you know, they're all part of the intern program and they're invited up to the sixth floor nurses station at General Hospital for a little party and yeah you know like hey welcome everybody you know and they make their way up there along with some other guy which I think Chris refers to him as Hawkeye or something because. <laughs> Because, you know, hey, you know, doctor with a Hawaiian shirt, why not? You know, make a MASH reference. Didn't MASH run on ABC at one point? I don't know. But but uh, Hawaiian shirt guy, once everybody gets up there, it turns out that he has rigged, like, the entire hospital to, what, to where he can do whatever the hell he wants to with it. Like, knock off security cameras, shut down elevators, you know, turn off the lights to where, to the, turn off the power to the point to where there's only emergency power going. You know, that sort of thing. He's a you know, computer hacker genius. And, well, why does he have this power? And why does he bring everybody up to the sixth floor? Well, there was a there was an eighth person who was in the running for this... Oh, excuse me. That was in the running for this, uh, you know, intern program at GH. Because, you know, just like Johns Hopkins and, and, and all that stuff, it's, it's prestigious. It is one of the best hospitals in the country. You know that you can go to, which you know, hey, gives all the characters an excuse to be there. But he was booted for a couple of reasons. One of which we'll we'll see as we go on. The other one is somebody came along and, and used their connections, or connections were used. Whether or not they used them, I'm still not a hundred percent sure. But uh, connections were used, and he was out, and, and this other person was in. 
And uh, by the way, this psycho's name is Greg Cooper. Remember this name. We'll, we'll, we'll need to refer to it later on in the series. Oh, Lordy. So, yeah. And once he, once he gets everybody in there, you know, he's waving his submachine gun around and he's threatening everybody because he should have been in there. Failure is not an option, that sort of thing, you know. And that was apparently the way his daddy raised him. Oh, boy, daddy issues. And, and, and you know what? They have two types of daddy issues. You have the psycho killer daddy issues, and then you have the more stereotypical and slut shamey daddy issues that he, he throws on Eve. Because all, all of her... All of her... All of her snobbishness. That's the word I need, snobbish. All that snobbishness turns out to be a facade because, well, she's just... You know, her daddy didn't love her is, is the in-universe given reason. Um... And, and apparently she only dates older men, which I've actually seen later on in the series, and I'm like, you know, <laughs> I, I think that that's, yeah, yeah, they 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 established it very well there, um, so um, yeah, <laughs> oh, so, and and we also get establishments of of all these other characters, like. Like at one point, Joe is known is noted for, you know, feeling powerless when his father died, or, or um, oh god, or or like Chris who, who, who was raised similarly to Cooper, you know, in that in that he had a father that that worked everything and wanted to be the best for him and everything, but his father wasn't really a dick. Um, his father built things from the ground up, you know, is you know, you know, salt of the earth type of man, and thus makes Chris a little bit better. <laughs> Um, uh, let's see, uh, Dr. Harmon, Matt, um, he, he just wants to prove that, you know, yeah, you know, even though you're disabled, you can, you can do, pull off shit like this, you know, you can still do it. Julie, not much has been revealed, except for, like, what seems to be a throwaway line of, um, wanted to be the son daddy always wanted, sort of thing, which means another bit of, uh, I hate the term, but daddy issues. Uh, not, again, not a big fan of the term, but if, if it fits. Uh, you know, um, um, oh god, what other, what other, what other, so, all right, so as a result of, of Greg doing this and pulling all this together, meanwhile, Lucy is leaving the doctor's appointment and she gets trapped in the elevator. And at one point, the elevator does drop a bit till it will to where it hits the sixth floor. And she tries calling out for help and gets shot at for her trouble <laughs> because Greg Cooper is easily spooked. And of course, somebody in there, somebody in an elevator, could have a cell phone. They could call nine one one, which of course Lucy does. Uh, and so of course they got the cops rolling all in there, and 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 as Kevin is making his way out, he goes home. He gets a message from Lucy. He's like, she's trapped in the elevator, and 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 it's at this point, Doc is realizing what's going on over there, and he, and then he just gets this oh shit, and runs right the hell back. <laughs> um. And even during all of this, even before shit gets a little too far down, uh, they bring in another legacy character, Audrey Hardy, who who has been on the show, been a character on the show since almost the beginning. And and so they bring her in along with Doctor Redshirt. I don't remember his name, but he, he, he he's a Doctor Redshirt. But they make the, make their way into the nurses station, which was locked from the inside, but not from the outside. So if you're on the outside, you can just easily walk in. And they walk in just as Chris is talking Cooper down. Because he's like, you know, no, 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 man. No, man, no, man, man. You, 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 you can still do this. You can still do this. It's just easy, easy. And they open up the door. Dr. Redshirt is blustering around. And he just spooks and shoots all over the place. Somehow he only hits Dr. Redshirt and kills him. And, and it's at this point when all of the interns are, are trying to help him and all of that. Time is of the essence. Chris is looking for gloves, which... To be fair, is, 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 you know, a good safety thing. Because uh, you never, you don't know what he has. You know, I mean, it could be something contagious that he has that, that you don't want to catch. And, and, of course, you don't want to accidentally, you know, uh, contaminate him either if you've got something. Um, even, even if it's just, like, you know, dirt on your hands or whatever. Um, so, you know, you know, and you're in a hospital. You have access to it. Um, but then again, of course, time is of the essence. So it's like, it, it, it's... Yeah, you, you gotta pick and choose, I suppose. But pick, Chris picked, you know, getting the gloves. And one of the things he puts out there, I'm just sitting here, I'm, 
I, I just had to tilt my head because he said he said that uh, well he might be gay. What? I mean I know it's 1997, but what? Okay. <laughs> um, but anyways, the guy dies, and Audrey, you know, she tries she tries leading one of the interns out, and Cooper's not having any of that, so he basically pistol whips her with a submachine gun. Makes sense of that. Anyway, Audrey's knocked out, and she's going into, like, seizures or, or, or whatever that thing is. This is more than just a concussion. Could be an epidural hematoma as hard as he hit her. Yeah, that. And, um... And it turns out that they, they, they got to operate on her a little bit. None of them have ever done this, by the way. They've only watched. They've never operated on a person. And they need to relieve some pressure in her skull. Well, that's where the power drill comes in. Joe ends up taking the power drill, you know, sterilizing it, of course, you know, with whatever tools they have on hand, and drills two holes into her head. Thankfully, they don't show it, you know. I mean, I mean, this is like ABC, supposed to be daytime TV. Although this was probably a prime time uh, pilot, um, but yeah, <laughs> you know, and and of and of course Chris the whole time is sitting there like ah no 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 he's worried about his own ass getting out after he gets after he gets out of here because of course he is, um, <laughs> so so in the mean so while all that is still going on we've got. Doc trying to get up there, and after and, and and he's stopped by some cop, and and Frank ends up coming in because Frank, I have not talked much about him because he hasn't had much to talk about. Um, right before uh, Audrey and Doctor Redshirt go up there, he mentions the party, and they're both like, "Wait, what party? What?" Which sets, which you know, gets the wheels going in his head. And, excuse me. And once things start happening, he's like, "Okay, got to do this." So he sees Doc trying to go up there to get Lucy, and he, he docks the other, I, I think the cop or, or, or whoever it was, gets him to go away, and then he leads then he leads Doc up there to go and rescue Lucy, who at, by this point has gotten out of the elevator by climbing up, and eh, she's kind of hanging on for dear life as the, as the uh, elevator just goes a little further down a little bit more. And so, so Doc and Frank, they rescue her, they get her up to there, and Doc also apparently knows how to work the elevator system to bypass it and let it work some more. So while he and Lucy are hanging on doing that, um, Frank gets down in there to try and, you know, pry the, pry the doors open just enough so where he can see what's going on, report back to whoever. And it's not too long after, after all of this happens that it's revealed that Karen is the one who had the strings pulled to get her into the internship program, and exactly what happened to her on General Hospital? Uh, for those who don't already don't already know, those who do know, they know that when she was about 17 or so, she went to work for Sonny Corinthos, who at the time, you know, nowadays we know Sonny as somebody who does not tolerate drugs through his territory or anything, but at the time he, you know, drugs, you know, she was on like barbiturates or whatever, and she was also a dancer at his club. And if, Cooper, if what Cooper said is any indication, she also had a few dalliances with the man. Oh, dear. <laughs> oh, so, so you know, you know, basically throwing her past at her, in her face and everything. And, of course, Joe had no idea because, well, you know, they lost contact. Even, even in a town the size of Port Charles. I mean, hell, even I'm in a small town myself. And there, there are people around here that I would have no idea what the fuck they're doing. So... You know, it, it can happen. It doesn't matter how small a town it is. Um, and, and that's just to cover people. Be like, wait, I thought Port Charles was a small town. Eh, it's not really that small. At least especially not anymore. I digress. So, Karen notices Frank you know, peering out of, the, out of the elevator. And she gets this idea of distracting Cooper with her, with, with her old act. You know, before he kills her. Because that's what... Cooper's there for to kill the person who took his spot because, you know, failure cannot be failure, no um, so she does and the tune actually makes Lucy fall asleep, I guess and Doc has to wake her up and and and, and all of that before she falls to her death and 
And so she and Doc, and, and I say the both of them do because Doc has like one last thing to go, but he needs a hammer or something. Lucy happens to be wearing heels. Um, you know, Chekhov's high heels, I guess. And, and so they get the elevator fixed. They get all of that fixed. Just as a few of the other interns, you know, get Cooper all, 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 all uh, you know, bound up. Not bound up, but um, restrain him. And it turns out Eve is holding the gun on him because what the things he was saying to her, you know, like, like, oh, you know, you know, basically slut shaming her for wanting to bang older men and, and wanting to be a doctor because she wants to hide that or, 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 or cover that or whatever, you know, it got to her and she was about ready to just, you know, hold, you know, off him right there, but she doesn't. And almost as if on cue, everybody, all, all the cops and everything just pour in. It's like, where the fuck were you guys before? Uh, I mean, I know there was one point where Frank said, you know, that you got to have a sniper, you know, have a sniper ready. But it was just, ugh. Maybe they were distracted by the sexy. I don't know. Which, yeah, the dance was sexy, even if it was in a very odd place, <laughs> if you will. Um, so, yeah, the, that, that situation is all resolved. Um... Uh, the interns get to go home. Joe is going to have to go in front of the medical board because, well, he drilled two holes into a woman's head. You know? I mean, granted, it was to save her life, but still, you know, you drill two holes into a woman's head. Now, you know, they got to cover their asses. And I don't think Audrey would have done anything. I think she would have understood, but you never know. You know, it's, it's ass covering. And, of course, Joe is not a fan of that. He's like, you know what? I did what I had to do to save her life, and you're just worried about covering your ass? What the fuck? You know? <laughs> um... Uh, I, I actually forgot another uh, cameo appearance by uh, uh, Max Scorpio, who was the commissioner at the time. And, of course, he's around there. And he's greeting to Lucy and Kevin, say, hey, go home. And that's when Lucy and Doc are pulled into the police station by a very angry Scott who has come from Canada because Serena's been kidnapped. And he thinks Lucy did it. And, of course, you know, she's she's giving her account of where she's been throughout the day. But she's not quite ready to tell Doc that she's pregnant. So, yeah, that ends up getting her arrested. Damn it, Lucy. Damn it, damn it, damn it. Uh, so that's about... I, I, I hope that came through a little clearer <laughs> than what I thought. Um, didn't have to refer to my notes very much. Um, but, yeah. Oh, lordy. So, it, it's. I think it's a really good start... Uh, like I said, if you want to watch the episode yourself, you can find it on YouTube. It's it's not that difficult to find. Um, I think in, in terms of characterization, a lot of them are still kind of filling out. There are some really great like small moments, like um, after uh, Doc, when Doc and Lucy get ready to climb up to the little uh, you know, elevator shaft box or whatever it is, and she's worried about her purse and everything. She gives it to Doc, and Doc just unceremoniously whoop, throws it over, and she's like, ah! <laughs> so great uh, great little moments like that like like the establishing moment with the Scanlon brothers where you know Frank you know you know Frank is playing playing this whole elaborate thing on Joe or like talking about you know you gotta be this dressed up da 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 and establishing Joe's um, kind of less disdain for authority for the most part and and all of that and then Joe calling out after Frank when he has to rush off. You know, what's the seven-letter word for brother? A-S, don't you dare! <laughs> that was, that, those were some really cute moments. Um, oh, God. Uh, and, and by the way, no, I'm not referring to my notes, even though they are right in front of me. Uh, I'm just kind of thinking. Um, so I'm just telling you that. So if you're trying to die of alcohol poisoning at this point, you won't. Um, oh. But I think, um, well, oh, it does, uh, there are also some establishing things where, um, you know, Julie and Eve is, don't get along because all Eve really does is sit there and snark when she's not being, when, when Cooper is not, you know, you know, slut shaming her. Um, so, you know, th those two, they don't, they're not, they're not getting along at this point. And that does come through later on too, in some very hilarious moments as well. Um, but that's for later videos. <laughs> and at the end of the day, even, you know, Chris is like, you know, you know, about back there, I'm sorry, you know, you know, stressful situation, which, yeah, I can understand. And, and, and they're forgiving of him. 
Uh, if this was a few years later, they may not be. Who knows? Um, but yeah, it shows what all they do in stressful situations. Um, so yeah, that's the first one. I've got to wrap it up because my camera battery is apparently about to die. <laughs> so we don't want to. We don't want to have a repeat of the Age of Ultron vlog. So, uh, yeah, um, hope you guys enjoyed this. I know I rambled on quite a bit, almost 30 minutes. Wow. <laughs> uh, so, uh, like I said, check it out on YouTube if you want to go and check it out for yourself. It's a good watch. And I will see you here next week for the next week's worth of episodes of Poor Charles. And until then, this is Gomer, the Ranting Thespian, signing off. Yeah.